Hi, my name is uh, Po Chiu. My family name is Ko. So it's Ko Po Chiu. Just want to share with you a little bit about my life history. I grew up in a village or kampong in Tanemera near to Changi area. It was a very typical kampong and uh, many families have children with a number of four, eight, 10, 12. So my family was no different. There were eight of us children, five boys, three girls. My parents were uneducated. They were uh, all job laborers. Although we were poor, um, my childhood memories is very pleasant. Um, at least we have food on the table. We stay in an attap house, simple attap house. And um, also, I was fortunate then, the educational system in Singapore then was not so strict. For example, I remember I failed my exam every year. But still, we were promoted to the next standard. For example, when I was in primary three, I failed my exam, but there was an automatic pro, uh, promotion to primary four. Just that in my school, that standard, there were three classes. So if you fail the exam, you happen to go to the last class. Now, so that's why my childhood, I, all that I could remember was play, play and play. And um, eventually, although I managed to finish my elementary, I went to high school, but high school was not a very good high school. But still again, I enjoyed my high school very, very much. I would say that it has got partly to do with my family uh, simple value system. One way is uh, there was no pressure when I was in school because my parents felt that they worked very hard, they sent me to school. That's their job. That's the end of the job. Whether or not I can actually study, it's my destiny. Now, so I grew up, I had a very wonderful childhood. Like I mentioned, it's play, play, play. Now, until I finished high school, um, things were different a little bit. I realized that my, my results are not so good. I couldn't go to anywhere. I couldn't go to uh, junior college. I couldn't go to, you know, a technical school, what we so call in Singapore, polytechnic. And I sort of uh, wanted to give up, you know, until a friend told me that I should appeal because at least I have a slight chance of going to the next level of education. So after about one month when everybody has started their new school already, I eventually agreed to appeal. And uh, luckily I appealed and I got in and joined in the junior college. And when I was in junior college, I was very fortunate. I met somebody who came from a good family and he was very serious in his study. And he personally coached me. And they were already one month ahead of me. When I joined, joined the school, the school already started for one month. And this friend actually coached me personally. And uh, I managed to catch up. So that's how I passed my pre-U education. And then I went to uh, National University of Singapore. So I was very lucky, you know. If I were to be educated in today's ed new education system, I think I would be thrown out a long time ago. So in any ways, the National U University of Singapore, I did business study. Uh, it is a subject that I like very much, I'm glad. And um, naturally, after my graduation, I joined and worked as a bank officer in one of the big local banks in Singapore. When I was working in the bank, I was assigned to what was so-called a real estate sector. What it means is we primarily uh, grant loans to developers. Developers buy land, they wanted to construct houses or condominiums, they came to the bank and we finance them in the purchase of land and also we finance them in the construction of the uh, condominium or the houses. So it was from there that I was exposed to real estate. And uh, also not to mention that when I was working in the bank, I have actually come across a lot of businessmen directly, indirectly through real estate. 
So there was uh, one common thing I, I saw in businessmen. When I was a young bank officer, I realized many successful businessmen like to talk to me. Why? Because they were always very proud of their life history. Typically, many businessmen I notice is um, why they became successful is because at one time, they were down and out. And instead of giving up, they persevere because of their vision, because of their belief and their passion in what they were doing. So I had that uh, inkling from what I learned when I was a bank officer. But uh, in those days, working in the big banks is very competitive and I didn't quite like the competition. So I decided to leave the banking industry and then I joined the real estate. Now, so when I joined uh, the real estate industry as a real estate agent, uh, primarily, there were pull and push factor. The push, as I say, I didn't like the competition or the so-called politicking in a big organization. The pull factor was primarily the flexibility and also I thought, you know, I was the only graduate of my family. If I were to come out to be uh, my own, do my own business, I have the flexibility of looking after my parents. And true enough, uh, the first 10 years of my business, I had the flexibility of always being with my parents, accompany them for uh, medical appointment, have uh, dinner with them every day, spend time with them. And I'm very, very, very proud of that. And from the real estate, um, I mentioned I learned a lot from this businessmen and I saw how they make millions or so partly from the business, partly from the investment, investment in real estate. But I had a mindset then that, well, investment in real estate is only for the rich. You have to have the money to invest first. So, I didn't really think about investing in real estate until much later. Why? Because I saw, as I mentioned, you know, many of businessmen became successful and then they invest in real estate and their investment in real estate make them even more successful. Because in the last 40-50 years, Singapore real estate prices actually have gone up 40-50 times. So I can see their real estate portfolio has grown so much that many of them can actually retire very comfortably. So I eventually told myself that I have to uh, invest in real estate. So that's why I sold my government flat uh, in the late 90s and then I invested in a condominium in Singapore and subsequently um, I went into uh, some other small investment. It was later also in 2013, 2014 that I started exploring overseas and somehow I chanced upon Philippines to me, Philippines in the year 2013, 14, thereabout, it was exactly what it was like in Singapore in the 1970s. So I was very excited. I thought, okay, this is uh, one way I can actually do a catch up. I missed out in Singapore a lot. Now I can actually invest in Philippines. So I bought a studio in Philippines in 2014, immediately after my visit. And I'm thankful that, uh, you know, today, barely eight years down the road, the studio that I bought in Philippines has uh, doubled in value. So, with my, this experience, I really wish to tell a lot of young people, when in the 30, 40s, you still have a chance, and in particular, Filipinos, even if we are, when you're in the 20s now for Filipinos, you must invest in real estate in Philippines because Philippines is going through a huge transformation. The results will be fully seen come the year 2024 to 2026. And if you miss the boat now, it will be very difficult for you to get in. Just like now what's happened in Singapore. Even if you want to get in, there will be many, many measures 
to stop you from investing in real estate because it has already gone up so high and the government concern is when the real estate prices are too high a lot of people were not happy and especially the government also don't want to have uh, speculation I mentioned, uh, mentioned speculation not investment eh? if you're a genuine investor buying a house to stay the government can't stop you but the government don't want people to speculate and um, so Philippines now is actually in a very early stage um, very little restriction in fact bank financing is very uh, easily available down payment terms are very very comfortable therefore especially my Filipino friends you must invest in real estate in the Philippines now thank you